Laser ultrasonics uses lasers to generate and detect ultrasonic waves. It is a non-contact technique used to measure materials thickness, detect flaws and carry out materials characterization. The basic components of a laser ultrasonic system are a generation laser, a detection laser and a detector. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ultrasound generation by laser. The generation lasers are short pulse from tens of nanoseconds to femtoseconds and high peak power lasers. Common lasers used for ultrasound generation are solid state Q switched ND, YAG and gas lasers CO2 or eczemas. The physical principle is of thermal expansion also called thermoelastic regime or ablation. In the thermoelastic regime, the ultrasound is generated by the sudden thermal expansion due to the heating of a tiny surface of the material by the laser pulse. If the laser power is sufficient to heat the surface above the material boiling point, some material is evaporated typically some nanometers, and ultrasound is generated by the recoil effect of the expanding material evaporated. In the ablation regime, a plasma is often formed above the material surface and its expansion can make a substantial contribution to the ultrasonic generation, consequently the emissivity patterns and modal content are different for the two different mechanisms. The frequency content of the generated ultrasound is partially determined by the frequency content of the laser pulses with shorter pulses giving higher frequencies. For very high frequency generation up to 100 SGHZ femtosecond lasers are used often in a pump probe configuration with the detection system see picosecond ultrasonics. Historically, fundamental research into the nature of laser ultrasonics was started in 1979, by Dewhurst and Palmer. They set up a new laboratory in the Department of Applied Physics, University of Hull. Dewhurst provided the laser matter expertise and Palmer the ultrasound expertise. Investigations were directed towards the development of a scientific insight into physical processes converting laser-matter interaction into ultrasound. The studies were also aimed at assessing the characteristics of the ultrasound propagating from the near field into the far field. Importantly, quantitative measurements were performed between 1979 and 1982. In solids, the measurements included amplitudes of longitudinal and shear waves in absolute terms. Ultrasound generation by a laser pulse for both the thermoelastic regime and the transition to the plasma regime was examined. By comparing measurements with theoretical predictions, a description of the magnitude and direction of stresses leading to ultrasonic generation was presented for the first time. It led to the proposition that laser-generated ultrasound could be regarded as a standard acoustic source. Additionally, they showed that surface modification can sometimes be used to amplify the magnitude of ultrasonic signals. Their research also included the first quantitative studies of laser induced Rayleigh waves, which can dominate ultrasonic surface waves. In studies beyond 1982, surface waves were shown to have a potential use in non destructive testing. One type of investigation included surface breaking crack depth estimations in metals, using artificial cracks. Crack sizing was demonstrated, using wideband laser ultrasonics. Findings were first reported at a Royal Society meeting in London with detailed publications elsewhere. Important features of laser ultrasonics were summarized in 1990. 
Topic ultrasound detection by laser for scientific investigations in the early 1980s, Michelson interferometers were exploited. They were capable of measuring ultrasonic signals quantitatively, in typical ranges of 20 nm down to 5 pm. They possessed a broadband frequency response, up to about 50 MHz. Unfortunately, for good signals, they required samples that had polished surfaces. They suffered from serious sensitivity loss when used on rough industrial surfaces. A significant breakthrough for the application of laser ultrasonics came in 1986, when the first optical interferometer capable of reasonable detection sensitivity on rough industrial surfaces was demonstrated. Monkelin et al. at the National Research Council of Canada in Boucherville showed that a Fabry Perot interferometer system could assess optical speckle returning from rough surfaces. It provided the impetus for the translation of laser ultrasonics into industrial applications. Today, ultrasound waves may be detected optically by a variety of techniques. Most techniques use continuous or long pulse typically of tens of microseconds lasers but some use short pulses to down-convert very high frequencies to DC in a classic pump probe configuration with the generation. Some techniques notably conventional Fabry Perot detectors require high frequency stability and this usually implies long coherence length. Common detection techniques include, interferometry homodyne or heterodyne or Fabry-Perot and optical beam deflection GCLAD or knife edge detection, with GCLAD, gas-coupled laser acoustic detection, a laser beam is passed through a region where one wants to measure or record the acoustic changes. The ultrasound waves create changes in the air's index of refraction. When the laser encounters these changes, the beam slightly deflects and displaces to a new course. This change is detected and converted to an electric signal by a custom-built photodetector. This enables high sensitivity detection of ultrasound on rough surfaces for frequencies up to 10 MHz. In practice the choice of technique is often determined by the physical optics and the sample surface condition. Many techniques fail to work well on rough surfaces e.g. simple interferometers and there are many different schemes to overcome this problem. For instance, photorefractive crystals and four-wave mixing are used in an interferometer to compensate for the effects of surface roughness. These techniques are usually expensive in terms of monetary cost and in terms of light budget thus requiring more laser power to achieve the same signal to noise under ideal conditions. At low to moderate frequencies say sample. At high frequencies say greater than 1 GHz, other mechanisms may come into play for instance modulation of the sample refractive index with stress. Under ideal circumstances most detection techniques can be considered theoretically as interferometers and, as such, their ultimate sensitivities are all roughly equal. This is because, in all these techniques, interferometry is used to linearize the detection transfer function and when linearized, maximum sensitivity is achieved. Under these conditions, photon shot noise dominates the sensitivity and this is fundamental to all the optical detection techniques. However, the ultimate limit is determined by the phonon shot noise. Since the phonon frequency is many orders of magnitude lower than the photon frequency, the ultimate sensitivity of ultrasonic detection can be much higher. The usual method for increasing the sensitivity of optical detection is to use more optical power. However, the shot noise limited SNR is proportional to the square root of the total detection power. 
Thus, increasing optical power has limited effect, and damaging power levels are easily reached before achieving an adequate SNR. Consequently, optical detection frequent has lower SNR than non-optical contacting techniques. Optical generation at least in the firmly thermodynamic regime is proportional to the optical power used and it is generally more efficient to improve the generation rather than the detection again the limit is the damage threshold. Techniques like CHOTs cheap optical transducers can overcome the limit of optical detection sensitivity by passively amplifying the amplitude of vibration before optical detection and can result in an increase in sensitivity by several orders of magnitude. Topic: <laughs> Industrial applications. Well-established applications of laser ultrasonics are composite inspections for the aerospace industry and online hot tube thickness measurements for the metallurgical industry. Optical generation and detection of ultrasound offers scanning techniques to produce ultrasonic images known as B and C scans, and for TOFD time of flight diffraction studies. One of the first demonstrations on small defects as small as 3 mm by 3 mm in composites was demonstrated by Dewhurst and Shan in 1993, for which they were awarded an Outstanding Paper Award by the American Society for Non-Destructive Testing in 1994. This was also the time when significant developments on composite examinations were developed from the National Research Council of Canada and elsewhere. A wide range of applications have since been described in the literature. <laughs> <laughs> 